It's really difficult to understand exactly what's going on between the U.S. and China, as both sides are keeping things very private. But if you just connect the dots with the stories that we actually know, I think it's pretty safe to say that the relationship isn't great. In this week's video, we're going to be covering all the current events that are going on between the U.S. and China, the new proposed stimulus plan, and lastly, we're going to revisit some charts that we looked at a couple weeks ago in gold, silver, and the U.S. dollar. Last week, the market was poised to have another good week until news broke between the U.S. and China, which I'll go into more detail in the next news section. And also, jobless numbers came out on Thursday, and we actually increased jobless claims for the first time on a week-over-week -week basis since March. And the overall performance for the market was down in the U.S. The S&P 500 was down about 0.3% and still only down 0.5% year-to-date. The NASDAQ was hit the hardest, down 1.33% last week, but still up over 15% year to date. Moving on to foreign and emerging markets, and emerging markets surprisingly were positive for the week, up almost a percent. And they've continued their rebound and are now down under 4% for the year. Mike Tedeschi, Wealth Management Advisor, with this week's chart breakdown, we're going to take a look at three things, the U.S. dollar, gold, and silver. Uh, first off, let's jump in and take a look at the U.S. dollar. We have a weekly chart of the U.S. dollar up here, so we're looking at the last five years, and we broke under the low from earlier this year last week, and we subsequently have followed through here Monday morning. And when we back this chart up, we look at it in a monthly basis. What we notice here is we've talked about this level right at about 90 six is really being the midpoint of the range that we've traded in since 2014 which is really between 88 and 104 and we broke below that midpoint and now we continue to push lower a we're looking kind of for that move back into the bottom of this range around that 90 uh, down to that 88 zone of support and subsequently with weakness out of the u.s dollar we are seeing real strength out of the precious metals so uh, this top line here on gold and this is a monthly chart is right at 1824 that was the highest monthly close of all time the month still isn't over uh so we could fall back below that but highly doubt it it looks like we're gonna have the highest monthly close of all time and in fact gold has made a new all-time high here this morning of 1941 and 90 cents silver is also following through with an incredible breakout um, going from $18 an ounce to almost 25 here. And I'll look at it. It's on a daily chart really in the last six or seven days. Uh, just an absolutely explosive move. And this is what happens when you look at long time ranges that finally broke into the upside. Uh, volume certainly has been good there as well. Um, we're looking at that next zone of resistance right at 26, and if it gets up above that, we're looking back for a move back into 35 for the long term. Now I wanted to cover what exactly happened between the U.S. and China last week. And this all began on Tuesday when the U.S. ordered the Chinese consulate inside of Houston, Texas to be shut down within 72 hours. Now right after that news broke, the police in Houston were reporting smoke coming from the courtyard area of the consulate. And also there are videos now circulating showing people inside the consulate burning documents in the courtyard before they left. The U.S.'s decision to close the consulate was based on the fact that they wanted to protect American intellectual property and Americans' private information. And Senator Rubio also came out and said that the Chinese consulate was a node of the Communist Party's network of spies. And in predictable fashion on Friday, China retaliated, ordering the U.S. consulate in Chengdu to close within 72 hours. Over the weekend, China authorities took control of the property and lowered the United States flag. Now, as I said in the intro, it's very difficult to figure out what exactly is going on between the U.S. and China. But I think one thing is safe to say that the relationship between the two biggest superpowers in the world is deteriorating. Now also over the weekend, Larry Kudlow, the economic advisor for the White House announced that the GOP has put forth their next round of stimulus plan to get voted on. And this stimulus plan included another $1,200 direct payment to everyone in the United States. They're going to be looking to slash the unemployment benefit 
from $600 to an additional $200. They're going to be looking to add additional funds, billions of dollars to schools to help them reopen in the fall. Also, they're looking to provide a payroll tax break to every American, as well as include a bonus for any company that brings back a worker to the workforce. Oh, by the way, the proposed spending for this new bill is one trillion additional dollars. This is exactly why we've been focused so much on hard assets and precious metals over the past couple months. As we continue to print money, the buying power for the US dollar has to continue to decrease. Thanks for watching, and if you could please subscribe to our YouTube channel, we would greatly appreciate it as we're trying to grow our YouTube following. This week is a huge week for earnings, and that's going to be one of our sole focuses. Thanks for watching. See you next week.